I was not into it. Sorry. Uh, maybe because I don't live in the, was it the zone of trouble, the trouble zone, the cone, some sort of zone. Millions across the, the zone of totality. For those in the zone of totality, it can be a unique experience. Unless you're in that zone of totality, in that path of totality, and only during totality. They actually acted like the zone of totality was something we all knew and understood. And yes, of course, it's the zone of totality. I've seen a couple of these eclipses before. We've had a few of them before. Nobody ever talked about the zone of totality. Made it sound so prestigious somehow. Anyway, that's over. And Joe Biden is trying to ruin the country, literally ruin the country and make us something we're not. A socialist, maybe even a communist state. He doesn't have the authority, but he's doing it anyway. From day one, my administration has been committed to fixing the broken student loan system and making sure higher education is a ticket to the middle class, not a barrier. Yeah, he's all about breaking barriers, barriers to the middle, barriers at the border, barriers. He hates barriers. And from day one, I think his mission was to kind of destroy this country. All right. How many people are going to, he's going to try to buy their votes by election day, buy their votes. My administration has approved debt cancellation for 4 million Americans through various actions. And today I'm announcing new plans that would cancel student debt for millions more. In total, these plans would cancel some or all student debt for 30 million Americans. All right, in total, a zone of totality, perhaps. Uh, he does not have the authority. The Supreme Court keeps telling him, Joe, you can't do this, and he keeps doing it. Let's see here. The Supreme Court did say specifically that no authorization for the plan. There's no clear congressional auth authorization for such a program. Joe is acting like a dictator, a uh, autocrat, and we don't have that kind of system, at least not yet. This uh, website, by the way, is called Student a.gov. Uh, good luck navigating the thing. Uh, I think the same guy who came up with the Obamacare website came up with this one, so maybe we'll be able to save some money after all because no one's actually going to be able to you know, get through all those applications. It is a big pain in the neck. But Joe's impulses here and that of his administration are communist. Comrade Joseph. Joseph, like Joseph Stalin. Joe Stalin. We spelled it the same way. This is this is not public service. This is not, this is not even American politics. This is weird. This is straight out of uh, the manifesto. They do call it public service, right? And with great indignation, by the way, Joe is, and the whole family, we are about public service. They have tried to dehumanize me, all to embarrass and damage my father, who has do devoted his entire public life to service. He gets, he gets a little caught up there. Uh, no, and I was going to show you how Joe is not involved in public service in a moment. We all kind of know that, but, and remember, it's not service, it's power and money for them. Hunter even said it in a text to Devin Archer, Bidens are different and you are a Biden. It's the price of power and the people questioning you truly have none. Does that sound like somebody who has a public service on his mind? Does Joe Biden look like a guy who's a public servant? This is how Joe would dress when he went around uh, Delaware. A hat that said his first name and a great big button, U.S. Senator, in case you, in case you forgot, I am a U.S. Senator and please give me money. Anybody who's asking for donations, you know, like that, I don't think that they have too much room for public service. No. Um, all right. What else do we have here? Biden at rest. What's that all about? Biden at rest. Oh, yeah. The Biden rest stop. Yeah, this is not public service either. Getting federal funds for a rest stop uh, on I-95 in Delaware that they name for you. Is that public service? I don't think so. Joe was the prince of Delaware. And if you go around Delaware, well, Joe was like an institution that you didn't mess with because he would come after you. We've demonstrated that many, many times on this show. It's almost like Joe was some sort of, not an aristocrat, almost like a communist, almost like the communists of the old Soviet Union. He even reminds me of one right now. Seriously, he looks like uh, the last string of leaders they had before 
Gorbachev. The first one was Yuri Andropov, that's Konstantin Chernenko, uh, and Leonid Brezhnev, remember him? Uh, Joe talks the way the Soviets used to talk. Grand exaggerations, uh, everything is fine, don't worry, and look at the body uh, language. It's, it's straight out of Moscow, 1970. Before getting an update from my supply chain task force, I want to say a word about the progress our economy's made this year. Nearly six million new jobs, a record number for a new president because of my staff and my cabinet. We're making progress. We got a way to go. We're making progress. I see Marty yeah, and Walsh. Yeah, it's my the same leadership. thing. Marty's it is the same thing that they were doing for a long Cutting time. Tape, it is, you know, and Joe's thing. rise in politics is straight out of communism. You know, the, you start small with the party and you, you get bigger and bigger and bigger and you make great, big, grandiose statements that are actually lies. I know that type is kind of hard to read, but, you know, yeah, we just opened this factory, we just opened this roadway, everything's great, everything's fine. Uh, no, things not good over there, and they haven't been, and they still aren't. Navalny, the guy they arrested, they arrested their political opposition, a guy named Navalny. And it is very much kind of, there's a Trump correlation big time. You know what they got him on first? They found him <laughs> embezzlement. He was embezzling money from his own company, uh, accused him falsely, we believe, of stealing $500,000 worth of timber, and they gave him a five-year prison sentence. You know, that guy could have run against Putin and won. Sound familiar? This is the way they roll over there. They also say things like, what happened in Afghanistan wasn't a loss. No, it was the greatest strategic withdrawal in the history of the world. That's what they call it, with a straight face. Lloyd Austin, uh, that Kirby guy at the podium. And this is security, the border. This is a secure border. We've all heard Kamala Harris, you know, oh, there may be challenges, but the border is under control. And Ashley Babbitt was somehow a valid target? Are you crazy? This is the kind of stuff that happens in communist countries, a complete denial of reality. And I'm going to stay with this. You know, the January 6th people who are still going through the system, the system that is warped and corrupt. Take this guy. He brought a Molotov cocktail near the Capitol. He didn't throw it. He didn't ignite it. He got nearly four years in federal prison, okay? Now, there have been people in New York City who've actually thrown Molotov cocktails at police cars, multiple police cars. One of them got one year supervised release. The other guy got 15 months. See, you don't throw the Molotov cocktail. You think better of it, and you don't throw it. You get four years. Those on the right, bombing, actually bombing a police car. We got a whole bunch of examples like this. January 6th, remember this guy? 75 days in prison. How about during Black Lives Matter? This individual brought explosives, firecrackers, uh, flammable liquid to a BLM protest, uh, ignited some of them, and got a one-day prison sentence. Just one day. Big old Barnett. He didn't break into the Capitol. He didn't hurt anybody. He embarrassed Nancy Pelosi, put, oh my goodness, his feet up on her desk. Uh, these two individuals burned down a Wendy's. What did they get? <laughs> 150 hours of community service. Uh, this is, this is not right. This is a bizarre world. I don't know if they're that bad in Russia or the Soviet Union. Next. A remarkable story breaking today. A group of retired generals are sounding the alarm on what it would mean for American democracy should Donald Trump win at the Supreme Court over his bizarre claims of complete presidential immunity. In a brief to the Supreme Court, they write this today, quote, the petitioner's theory that the president is absolutely immune from criminal prosecution if accepted, has the potential to severely undermine the commander in chief's legal and moral authority. All right, to lead the military. Military should be staying out of this one, but they're swampy, they lose wars, so they're involving themselves, all right? So many generals are absolutely terrible. They have no business 
signing on to a brief about January 6th, but a bunch of them did. But I got to tell you something about them. Don't trust them. Uh, let's take a look at those who signed this uh, brief before the Supreme Court that uh, President Trump should be immune for the actions of January 6th. And it's a complicated question, and most of these guys have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. Most of them are not lawyers, but even the ones who are, um, I don't think they drafted the thing. But I have to remind everybody, these are mostly Democrats or people who are deeply conflicted and loyal to the Bidens personally. Let's start with Ray Mavis, that's his name. Uh, he was a former governor, I think of Mississippi. Yeah, he, but he was appointed by Clinton and Obama to big jobs, including being the ambassador to Saudi Arabia. Now I want to go to a guy named Chuck Krulak, who at one point was the commandant of the Marine Corps. But when he left the Marine Corps, he joins MBNA Bank in 1999. That is the largest employer in Delaware. And boy, do they want to stay on Joe Biden's good side. Absolutely. There is a relationship there, or at least there was for many, many years. In fact, Hunter Biden worked at MBNA. Yep. Uh, a son of Democratic vice presidential candidate, Joe Biden, was paid an undisclosed amount of money as a consultant by MBNA, the largest employer in Delaware. During the years, the senator supported legislation that was promoted by the credit card industry and opposed by consumer groups. And now one of their former employees who probably still gets a pension is <laughs> signing their name to a brief before the Supreme Court. They don't know anything about it. The military, they should stay the hell out of it, really. This is getting dangerous and weird. One other thing, uh, this really could happen by next week. You know, Judge Mershon, uh, he's presiding over that um, uh, non-disclosure, Michael Cohen, Stormy Daniels case, at least he's scheduled to, but he has a major conflict of interest. I mean, that thing with his daughter is no joke, and even liberal judges are saying so. One of the most liberal and in some ways worst judges in the world is a woman named Shira Shinland. She's far left, terribly far left, but I'll give her this, on this case, she wants to follow the law. She says there's a law that says that Judge Mershon can't be a judge presiding in the Trump case. The daughter does work with many, many high profile Democratic candidates. She works on their social media. They put out a post. They get contributions. She, as an owner, gets a percentage of those contributions. So there is a statute in New York which says a judge must disqualify himself if a person known uh, by the judge to be within the sixth degree of relationship, and a daughter is the first degree, has an interest that could be substantially affected by the outcome of the proceeding. How about that? There is a law. I didn't know that there was a law, but hey, this judge knows the law, at least in this case. Ordinarily, I would think that a benefit financially would be to a spouse because they share the income. This is an independent adult daughter. They don't share income. Mm -hmm. But according to this, according to this statute, according to this statute, the judge must recuse if she would substantially benefit from the outcome. Well, uh, it seems pretty black and white that Judge Mershon needs to go away. There are all kinds of other judges they can choose from. Uh, maybe not one that gave to Joe Biden, wrote a check to Joe Biden. And his daughter works for Kamala Harris. This is crazy. Then again, the whole damn thing is crazy, isn't it? Uh,